We're so happy to be back with you this week. And for those who are joining uh, for the first time who weren't with us last week, uh, welcome to you. Uh, there is a recording of last week's meeting. So if you want to take a look at that, uh, look at that, then that recording went out on the uh, ADP email list um, and is available for watching uh, in conjunction with this week. Um, also, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize the pandemic that we are all in the midst of. Um, Monica introduced us as working with ADP online, which is absolutely correct. And I want to recognize that specifically working online at this moment in time during this pandemic. Um, I myself can say that I know more and more people who um, have been sick or are sick. Um, I know many therapists who have been sick themselves um, and want to just recognize how much we are all carrying in addition to just managing um, the measures that are being taken to contain the virus and that we're all working in these stressful times. And um, so I just want to take a moment to situate us in context in this particular moment and recognizing the many different ways all of us who are on this webinar today may be affected at this time. So uh, first I should say who I am. I'm Ben Medley. I am uh, in New York. I'm coming to you. Uh, well, I'm actually not in New York. I'm in Jersey City, which is New York adjacent and um, coming to you from uh, my apartment and uh, I'm happy to be with you. Karen. Hi everybody. I'm Karen Pandemars and I'm in California. Uh, coming to you from San Anselmo, my home office. And um, I just want to welcome you and acknowledge, as Ben saying, the times that we're in. And, and it just brings to mind how important it is for us to be aware of taking note each day of ourselves and what new information we're privy to or new people we may know who are ill or who are losing someone. And just... Um, just take a moment and just check in with yourself and see how you're feeling as you're arriving here today. What perhaps new news you're aware of and how that affects you and your body. And just let's orient with ourselves first. Taking a breath. And then, just these are such big times. So, and we're here to try to help you with this move to working online with so much going on for people. Uh, as Monica gave helpful descriptions of how we'll incorporate questions. So I'll just leave that to, um, to just send in your questions. And I think Ben, we wanna just take a moment to look at last week mm -hmm. or you can say something else and then I'll add something and then we'll continue. Yeah. So last week we talked about at the very beginning, we talked about setting up space and um, setting up the virtual office as we started um, calling it. And I wanted to say a couple of things more about uh, some of the things that we said. Um, one, I just wanted to point out that I'm using earphones. Um, this is one way that we can also increase um, sound privacy when, when we're working with clients is to limit the, what can be heard from just one side of the conversation. Also, people uh, often feel they don't have to speak as loudly when they're using earphones. So that's one thing that we can encourage our clients, if they have them, to use them. Um, also, since we met last time, one thing that's come up in the world, a lot of us are using the platform Zoom and a lot of questions about Zoom uh, security 
and Zoom bombing as something that has been happening. I spoke to someone who said they were having a session and all of a sudden uh, someone appeared in the middle of the session screaming and it scared them both. And uh, it was a, someone Zoom bombing. Um, Zoom just added a security shield at the bottom of the screen and you can set up a waiting room so that you uh, can admit the people into the session that you want to admit. And um, also once you're in the meeting, you can choose to lock the meeting so that no one else can join. So I wanted to say something about that because that's something that has been concerning for a lot of people. And the other thing I wanted to say something about is we talked about setting up the optimal space and uh, I want to recognize that sometimes it's not possible to do all of the things that we've been recommending as suggestions. Uh, and so it's really, really important to also be flexible to find the parts of ourselves that can be flexible in working with uh, our clients and also in getting creative. I've met with people in their cars, which I actually think is a great place um, to meet. Uh, people have privacy, sound privacy. Um, they're sitting upright in a chair. It can actually be a good place to, to meet. Um, also, if people need to use their phones or switching to voice only, um, because of uh, limitations in terms of technology or Wi-Fi. Um, turning off video if clients are uncomfortable with um, seeing themselves, that maybe you can turn that off so they just see you. Um, talking to people in places where the, maybe the only way that they can get privacy is to go for a walk um, and just, being, as we talked about last time, being implicit, uh, sorry, taking the implicit and making it explicit and just really problem solving with people about, well, how can we make this the best experience possible and talking it through so that maybe you can find solutions to some of these problems that are coming up. Um, along with that, one of the things I've been really aware of working with people is that uh, working with people online is that I'm seen into people's spaces. And so I am getting, I'm seeing into people's lives in ways that I wouldn't in my office and that there can be various experiences that come along with that. Um, for instance, if I see someone's apartment, I might learn something about them that I didn't know. Uh, for instance, if someone were hoarding or something like this, that that will be visually apparent to me and um, being uh, that we're having to manage these experiences and seeing video online, as well as clients seeing into our spaces and being curious about that and the feelings that can come up for our clients and for us surrounding both uh, directions of that. Um, for instance, if I'm talking to a client who is experiencing a lot of difficulties um, and then I'm in a space where it might be clear that I, um, for instance, if I were not in Jersey City if I were upstate or out, out in New Jersey somewhere where you see trees or more space or something like that, that I might have feelings myself that start to arise of feeling guilty or um, feeling shame. And I just wanted to recognize how those experiences might come up and um, to one of the ways that we can manage that is by being explicit about what and, and meta processing what it is like to see my space um, or being inquisitive about what is it like for me to be seen into your space so that we can make these experiences explicit and then work with them as we would in ABP. Karen I'll turn it over to you. Okay. I uh, 
along the lines of just clarifying what we talked about last week, um, the sense of working with defense, working with state one online, we're working during uh, such intense times. And so I wanted to remind us that part of what we're noticing is differentiating sort of negative feelings from true concerns, that people may be in such a defended place because of all that's coming in and all that's perhaps overwhelming. And so <clears throat> the point I wanted to make last week was to stay clear of like colluding with someone that it's only how difficult this time is and hold a positive lens. Like we can work with this if we stay with this, if we be with each other and notice that isolation, how difficult that is for you. <clears throat> that may be a pattern that is exaggerated now because it's how you're coping here. But can we stretch a little bit and have you reach towards me or towards your partner? Right, so the, the part of looking at what are the patterns that are exacerbated because of perhaps being online or because of being in the pandemic and how to stay with doing defense work and helping people to identify, you know, where they may have choice that they're not remembering right now. And along the lines of state one, working with anxiety, I'm noticing that I'm doing much more concrete regulating strategies for some folks, really working with schedules in the day or mm -hmm. very specific grounding exercises or noticing moments when something is happening that's a delightful surprise and actually experiencing the delight. So I'm really wanting to work with helping people through what they need to get through in order to cope with shelter in place and being alone in their house or being in such close proximity with one other person and just what that brings up for them. So there's the very real strategies and anxieties that come up also as people are learning more and becoming more aware of something's getting closer. Now a loved one has COVID or is in the hospital or is getting off a ventilator today and we don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. so to make space for these very real times and doing our best to stay with and regulate and to make ourselves available to um, really deepen as we need to. And so Ben's going to now kind of work with where we're going in deeper into state two work and pass it back to you, Ben. Yeah, thanks, Karen. And, I, you know, I want to add to what you're saying about recognizing how much our clients are managing and the state one work. Uh, we had a question come in about um, what we ourselves might be holding and experiencing as we work online. And um, the question uh, was surrounding not being able to be as fully present, maybe having lower energy as a therapist um, and striving to do our best. And um, the question was, is it okay to be the best therapist I can be right now, um, even though it's less than before? And um, I think that it's such an important piece of doing this work right now during this pandemic mm -hmm. is um, lending compassion to ourselves in all that we are carrying and doing our best to show up um, to do this work online mm -hmm. um, and honoring and being compassionate with our clients who are also doing their best to show up online that yes, I think it is okay to be um, the best therapist that we possibly can right now with compassion for ourselves, for all that we're holding and, um, and managing our own states. And um, as we're working with our clients, um, striving for ourselves at best or most resilient and also recognizing that sometimes we may not feel our best. Mm -hmm. So um, last week we spoke a little bit about in working in state two with the dyadic um, regulation of affect, the importance of making the implicit explicit 
um, in terms of uh, saying, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm getting closer to you now when we move closer to clients and using the language of being closer to people explicitly, not just saying I'm moving closer to my computer, um, asking explicitly how we are being experienced, if we can be felt, um, recognizing that um, you may be there in that room and I'm here in this room, but can you feel me with you? Um, we talked a little bit about the importance of asking for eye contact while doing uh, work in state two. Can you see me? What do you see in my face? Moment to moment tracking very closely, looking for shifts, looking for looks away, looks towards, um, those kinds of things. Also, um, we talked a, a bit about getting out of the window of tolerance. And one of the things that's very different in terms of working in state two is where I might move towards or I might even um, touch someone uh, in helping to ground and regulate um, that I do not have the ability to uh, literally get close to someone or to reach out uh, while I'm working online. Um, and like I said, one of the things we can do is move towards the computer uh, and be explicit about, did you notice that I just moved closer? Um, I had a session earlier this week where I did move closer towards someone I was working with. And he said to me uh, before I even asked, yes, I did see that you moved closer, right? Because I've been making it so explicit in sessions about um, moving closer or leaning forward because it may not be seen if someone looks to the side or something like that in the way that it might be seen if I'm in an office. Um, also, in terms of touch, one thing we can be explicit about is what we might do if we were together in an office. This is a moment where I'm, I uh, would move closer to you, or this is a moment where I might put my hand on your leg, if that's something that you've had an experience of doing before, to help bring, to help regulate the affect and bring back into a window of tolerance. Um, also, one thing that I find myself doing a lot more of is mirroring. Um, so I will be tilting my head to the side when my client's tilting to the side, putting my hand on the chest. Again, one thing we talked about last week was making sure that it's visible um, by either moving back or raising the hand just slightly to make sure that that can be seen uh, when a client might um, Put their hand here or if a client does this I might find myself doing that um, mirroring more and making sure that I can be seen in the video um, it's communicating many different things but I'm with you I'm curious I'm noticing what's happening in your body also it, it gives us a felt sense of what our clients might be experiencing especially when our visual is limited to this amount of information. Um, using the imagination. Um, this is what I was talking about, about with touch is although I'm not physically there with you now, what do you imagine me doing that I might normally do? Right. If we were in the same room, I might fill in the blank using the imagination to do something that might be limited by working online. Um, earlier this morning, I had a session with a client uh, where he really felt um, seen by me, gotten by me. There was relief, a sense of groundedness. And he's someone that usually hugs me at the end of the session. And I was feeling that impulse to um, hug him as we were ending and I just made it explicit and said I'm imagining us in the room and doing what we would normally do right now which is me giving you a hug and he he did this in the screen visually um, 
And I did it back to indicate that, yes, we're imagining this in our minds, but it also allows to receive um, on both ends, right? It's a dyadic experience, um, even though that's something that wasn't happening in state two, um, but we can use that in state two to help with regulation. Um, also in terms of upregulating, being more mindful because we, as we spoke last week about the visual and auditory um, channels are, we're depending on them more uh, working online. So being really mindful of our tone, of our speed, using body um, to and making sure that it's visible when we're upregulating with clients to sit upright, to move around, especially again with mirroring, if our clients are starting to do that, to join them, to upregulate, listen to how my voice is going up. I'm starting to talk faster as I'm just speaking about it now. And be mindful of these to help in terms of, for instance, upregulating anger to experience anger um, if someone's downregulating it. Um, looking in moment to moment tracking for those glimmers of vitality and upregulating them when someone begins to shut down. Um, I notice your upper arms moving, what's happening with your lower arms, with your hands, again, being curious about the soma, the somatic experiences that may not be visible, listening for sounds such as a uh, uh, a hit on an arm of a chair. If we hear that, to be inquisitive about, oh, what just happened? Oh, what's your hand saying? Your hand just hit the arm. What's, what's happening there? What's your hand communicating? So being curious about sounds that we hear too, because they may be indicating that something's happening with the body that we can't see and using those as ways to enter into um, state two experience. So um, those are some of the things we can do. And Karen, you want to tell us a little bit more? Sure, thanks. Thank you know, you. as I'm listening to you, Ben, talking about mirroring and matching and upregulating, I'm so aware of how much connection we can have online. Mm -hmm. And even though I loved last week when you said, I'm seeing you, do you see me? I was very aware this week of allowing that. Are you seeing me? Do you feel me? Because that undoing aloneness is so, so, so important right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also want to remember that part of state two is authentic communication. So the fact that we're going through something together in different ways, maybe at different paces, but I know. I'm in this, I'm in something, you're in something. And so sometimes clients will ask me, how are you doing? And I might say, actually, it's been a little rough. I learned someone I really care about is ill. And, you know, as I know many of us are. So while I may not go into detail, I might share something that's sobering about my impact. And it actually, often I find something really drops down with a patient or um, I was really triggered. I had just something happened with my home <laughs> and I was so unusually in at a, at a like, ah, this is so hard. I can't deal like really feeling that and noticing, wow, that triggered something very early in me. And with one woman I've worked with for a long time who gets pretty reactive in her patterning, um, I shared something with her about, you know, you know, this irritability that can, can come up or this helplessness um, also has deep roots. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she shared with me after, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I realize there are things coming up for me that I've never told you about and I realize I want to be working on. So this time also accesses early material that some folks may have more willingness to deal with now because they can see how there's some way that they may be compromised or limited in their coping now because this early material is getting activated. Mm -hmm. And as they're home with their families with not many outlets, oh, this would actually be a good time to get this personal work 
you know, to, to feel lighter in myself with that. So again, just to reiterate, you know, self-disclosure, we do it judiciously in AADP with the goal <clears throat> of undoing aloneness and deepening, deepening affect. I'm in it with you. I'm human. I understand. Um, and so sometimes the question has come up, like, how do I feel about bringing someone into an emotional experience when they're over there and I'm here and we're not in the same room? And that's where I think this attention to the fact that we are together in our virtual spaces and attention to feeling me with you is so important because when I see glimmers of affect or I hear a sentence that I know comes from a younger self, I want to make room and offer slowing down, making space. Can we be with this younger part of you? Can we be with this emotion and help someone to process? Because I, I have faith that nothing that doesn't feel good is ever the last step that we can get through, if not a whole lot of the grief, because there's so much coming up, waves of grief. You know, and for clients, even newer in the process, working with one man who um, is learning that a wave of grief can feel lighter and more calm, even though keeping it at bay and on the surface is what he's used to, dropping down, letting some tears fall, or letting that heavy release move brings a settling. And then a kind of, we'll get into this in a minute, state three sense of, oh my gosh, I, I got through this. And in this time of trauma, I'm growing my capacity in ways that I'm learning that I can process emotion. So I just want to encourage us to trust the model and trust that we can um, make space and, and, and allow ourselves to help our clients feel and deal with some emotion uh -huh. and uh, relationally not to be alone with that. And um, I want to, I want to say another piece about, um, there's a question here. Here's some of my feeling experiences are leaking into sessions. And, you know, I just want to say that there is something about sharing emotion. My client might have tears and my own tears might come. And I might say, can we take a minute together and let this pass mm -hmm. through and honor what we're feeling? Mm -hmm. And it almost takes me larger than it's you and me. But how many people are, are like, we're feeling this for ourselves and for humanity. This is so enormous. Mm -hmm. um, and I have this sense that you're. Yeah, I wanted to add that, you know, one of the things just like in the question that you were reading that has been coming up for me is, um, self-disclosure around um, what I'm experiencing during this time. Right. And, um, you know, I'm having so many different feelings and experiences through this, as I imagine a lot of other people are too. Um, and I have found myself including my own feelings and experiences in sessions um, when I'm talking to my clients. And so when I think about self-disclosure, self-disclosures uh, include facts about myself. So that may be, you know, where I am at this time, um, who I am in shelter in place with, you know, those kinds of things. And, um, and also there can be effective disclosures, which might be how I'm feeling uh, at this time or how I, felt um, at a particular moment while dealing with all of this. And I use self-disclosure judiciously. And so sometimes it may just leak in. And when, uh, when that happens, then um, meta process, and that's a kind of general rule about self-disclosure anyway, is when we put something out there to meta process what it's like for our clients to hear, to know, um, to learn about us. Um, and when I'm being mindful of self-disclosure, then I'm uh, in the 
and using self-disclosure judiciously, then it's always with the goal of um, either undoing aloneness or deepening the affect. And so I have found myself many times putting out there um, experiences of anxiety that I might have, experiences of stress, fear, um, sadness, grief, um, as well as factual disclosures about people I know who are sick or concerns that I have about people that I love and care for in ways of joining people and undoing aloneness and really meta-processing those. So I just wanted to add that to the question that's being asked. Mm -hmm. And I see, Karen, that someone has their hand raised as well. Right. I think that's what we've been responding to. Oh, was well, that actually different? someone, there are a couple oh. people who've raised hands who maybe want to come on screen. And I, it's totally your call. I know you have a lot of material to cover. So um, your call. If you want me to promote them, bring them on screen, I'd be happy to do that. I've also asked folks who are raising their hands to consider typing your question into the Q&A just in case there's no time to bring you on screen. Right. Right. We're, we're about three or four minutes behind our technical schedule there, Ben. So oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Um, let's I, let me just finish this last piece about portrayal work because I think that that's something addressed, and then maybe we'll take one question mm -hmm. and then we'll keep going through that. Okay. Um, I just wanted to name that uh, I mentioned part of working in state two is processing emotion to completion. And sometimes when there's a younger part that comes up or something gets accessed, you know, it takes us to portrayal work to uh, a lot of times in these times I see early grief comes up or what might have needed to be said to somebody or what younger part of you is feeling so alone and being so triggering for you now because you don't expect someone can be there with you. Mm -hmm. And um, so I found that I've been very able to do this, even this portrayal work online. And again, it's online, but I am with you and I'm asking someone as they're tuning into a younger part, can I be with you as you're with your younger part? And one of my clients recently couldn't be there with her own younger self. And I used my imaginal channel. It was a very young, young, young part. And I could see myself holding this like infant. And she was able to, um, we processed this. And in the end, she had a feeling of remembering herself being there for her younger daughter as mm. an infant. And so we were able to complete this session with her taking me with her and her with her daughter and transposing her adult self who could be with her daughter into her adult self who could be with her younger self. So there was quite a big shift in the intention, like we can, I'm holding, we can do this. And, and this can be helpful. And, and then there was this moment of, and now I'm gonna pack everything up and get back to work. And it's like, no, 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 can we just slow down? Can we tuck this part away in your heart, in my heart, or hold this with you, right? And then there was a gentler completion and not so much a, going right back into defense, but actually integrating this, holding it and moving forward. So just want to encourage us to have faith in ourselves and our model and our presence and our ability to track, you know, how is this going? What's happening each step along the way, meta processing so that we're really using our moment to moment tracking to make sure we're in a window of tolerance in, and is what's happening moving adaptively or moving uh, into a maladaptive or more alone. And just tracking that, I think, helps us to know and have confidence in where we're going. Okay. So should we take one question here, Ben? What's your sense? Sure. Um, I think I saw in the chat that we're going to try to bring David on. Is that correct? David or Anne. David's was about self-disclosure. And I uh -huh. don't know what Anne's question is. So it's your call. Who would you like? Uh, I think we spoke a little bit about um, experiences leaking in and self-disclosure in terms of Anne's question. So maybe 
Uh, maybe we can bring David in. I hope that feels okay and feels right. It was David who had the self-disclosure. Would you like to bring Anne in? Oh, that's, it says her name with that one, so maybe oh, it's... Oh, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Actually, there's one question that we haven't addressed. I have a client that's yeah. feeling sends her into pathogenic affect. Mm -hmm. This is causing her to not want sessions, but then is dealing with this alone. I suggested it would be helpful for me to just be with her to ground breath and be there. Any other suggestions? That sounds like that might be important to mm -hmm. give a thought to, because for some folks, the overwhelm drives into a difficulty in letting someone else be with them, right? Pathogenic affect. Uh, so would you like to say something about that, Karen? Well, this, um, I'll say something and then see what occurs to you, Ben. But as yeah. this, um, as Lisa's saying, this causes her to not want sessions, but then she's dealing with this alone. I think that's really important to make explicit and to make, um, to have empathy for. And then I think sometimes what I like to do is to say, like, what, what's the part that becomes so difficult? And so the suggestion of just being with her to ground and breathe and breathe there seems very important. And I might sometimes want to notice if there's a way that we can track what part gets overwhelming. Because I've noticed it's like that's the exceeding the window of tolerance. So if sometimes my client might say, I just can't go red signal affect. I just can't go to the amount of pain that I'm in right now. And I might say that feels right for right mm -hmm. here. But mm -hmm. can we deal with you with how hard it is to know that's there? just that much okay. so to titrate a little bit mm -hmm. that's what i would add to this yeah that feels right and um you know kind of making the making it explicit comes up again for me too of, mm -hmm. of just you know i really being compassionate in the adp stance way towards the experience and also being explicit about wanting to be there for them so that they're not alone with these experiences and, um, and then being able to meta process and, and figure out together, how, how can we do this? How can we do this in a way that feels better? Um, I've had that come up in terms of work with, uh, I'm thinking of a particular client right now who just felt really uncomfortable with talking to me in the spaces that he was in. And we did, um, and we did this offline. I had to be explicit offline through email about, I really want to be here for you during this time. I don't want to leave you alone with this. And how can we do this in a way that feels better? Here are some ideas that I'm having um, do you have anything to add to this? It's kind of like creating possibilities and figuring out what might work best in addition to what you're saying, Karen. So there's more than one avenue of, of possibilities. Karen, you're muted. Thanks. Uh, this might be a good time to drop into state three, Ben. It's 20 to 11, so I want to oh, okay. Yeah, and so I just want to say, I so appreciate people raising their hands and the questions that are coming in. We're doing our best to try to get to everything and also trying to make sure that we cover the material that we're, we've set out to cover. So um, we're going to dive into state three and state four, and then hopefully we'll have um, some more chance to answer some questions as we get into that. Um, so just a few things about working in state three online. Uh, we've talked a lot about using moment to moment tracking to um, closely track shifts. And this is really, really important as we move from state two to state three to be looking closely at the face at what we can see in the body for shifts into post breakthrough affects and entering into the state three transformational spiral. If we're unsure about what's happening, then we can be explicit and ask, what just happened? What's happening now? I noticed 
looked like you just took a breath there. What just happened inside? To be looking for those that that shift into the post breakthrough and state three um, transformational affects. I um, had an experience this week where someone was shifting, and uh, after uh, it seemed like a wave had come to completion. I did an explicit checking in. What's happening now? And uh, the answer was, I think I just need to cry. And out came another wave. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end of that wave, the post breakthrough started to emerge. So just being explicit, even if that's not what's happening in the moment, um, if we're unsure, we ask. Um, and of course, our main task in state three is meta processing. So, as the therapist, that's our goal. So, as we notice these shifts, we begin to meta process the shifts, making them explicit, and really tracking for the new and affirming and juxtaposing the previous experiences that might have been had. And so, this includes the experiences of working online. Mm -hmm. I think this is so important. <laughs> So for instance, if I have a client who says at the beginning of a session, you know, this just isn't the same, I don't like this, you feel so far away, that if as we get into state three, there's experiences of feeling um, seen, or if there's experiences of gratitude that start to emerge towards me as a therapist, or um, for the work that we're doing together, um, or if there's feelings of um, connection um, and healing through connection that start to emerge, that we make these explicit and juxtapose that to the experience that was there before of not liking it. Ah, um, so for instance, that can be a statement. Oh, so now here we are feeling much more connected than when we began. What's that like to feel so connected now through these computers, through these screens? Um, this can be really, really helpful, not only for the transformational affects that are coming online, but also for being aware of the possibilities of what can happen online for um, the session that we're having, but also for future sessions. So we're just bringing that to the forefront. It's a new experience of working online that we're also tracking and making explicit and metaprocessing. You know, Ben, as you're saying that, one of the things I'm thinking about is how important this piece in uh, ADP about having a new experience and then knowing I'm having the experience. Mm -hmm. In a sense, I'm having this new experience of working online. I never thought it would be helpful and oh my gosh it is and I'm thinking how valuable this is in this time of pandemic because we don't know yet what's ahead and right. some of our clients who are like oh, I don't, maybe I don't need you or I don't need this and yet who knows how their lives are going to be impacted and they might very much need us and so mm -hmm. in these days if we can establish that we are able to make a container we can be available for what's coming. I, uh -huh. I, yeah. It's just yeah. so sad saying this, but it's, it's part of what's on our minds these days, right? Like, yes. There's a, uh, we don't know yet what we're in for. Yes. Yes. And having that felt um, knowledge that is front and center and made explicit. And so that we're aware of just how, um, how much it is possible to do online mm -hmm. for future circumstances that might require more of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and also when we meta-process the experience of doing something together, um, using the language of being together. So, um, so if I'm saying, and what's this like to be with me today mm -hmm. that um it, it's subtle but i think it's important just this kind of like what we were talking about about moving closer when i say 
um, how is it for me to move closer to you and not to the computer, not saying the computer, but to you. Mm -hmm. um, that in the same way that um, the language that we're using of we-ness, as we say in ADP, of mm -hmm. being together, we are together, even though we're talking to computers and through screens with cameras, what's it like to be with me and do this work together today? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things Karen you alluded to uh, previously was having faith in the model and nudging um, towards the work and uh, you reference nothing that feels bad is ever the last step and so as I just wanted to mention that as we're going from that state two into state three and uh, that um, we want to nudge into those post breakthrough affects. We want to nudge into the um, transformational affects, knowing that with the model that there is the possibility for them to emerge. And um, when we have clients who say, "Well, you know, uh, they, you know, they ride that experience together, state two, and we, and someone says, "Well, we." That's it. Now we have to go back to this terrible situation to not just stop there, that we might have a pull towards, yes, it is true. We are in the midst of a pandemic and we can recognize that. And also, yeah, and what's it like to have this positive experience together? Is there a way we can carry this into the day, the sense of having done this work, these um, transformational affects that arise, giving, um, privileging and having faith in the possibility that pride and mastery can still emerge about doing something difficult, about being able to face challenges, about being capable of facing all the hardships, sickness, death, um, uh, the grocery store, right? Like all of these things that are challenging to people right now, um, experiences of anxiety, being able to, to face that, that can still emerge. Having faith that healing can happen in being with, being together, um, realizations that weren't there before, new links, um, gratitude for being in it together, um, enlivening effects, having more vitality. Someone asked about, you know, saying feeling tired, mm -hmm. that, um, that there is that possibility as we move through these states for someone to be in touch with being, feeling more alive in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and also mourning for the self to process um, grief that may come up in having experiences of feeling connected and having felt so alone during this, or um, just really trusting that all of these things are possible working online during this time. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, sure. No, I'm, I'm just thinking of, I was sharing with you, someone who at the end of like starting to feel some, a wave of affect, you know, it's like, oh, it's just so tiring and so challenging. And I remember a moment of thinking to myself, this isn't the end. I want to just like see what happens here mm -hmm. and to just ask them, like, well, just notice, what do you notice in your body? Well, I really did let a wave of emotion through. Oh, feel, do you know? And I actually asked specifically, do you notice anything else with that? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, calm. Mm -hmm. And oh, maybe now I can have dinner with my family. And there was this little waking up, a little enlivening. You know, and that sense of like, oh, when I can let a little through, I might actually have more room for more. Mm -hmm. Right? That's part of building capacity to cope and to deal. Mm -hmm. And um you know, so here is where I'm also on the lookout for glimpses of core self. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of moments where now I'm moving into state four, where a client might say, you know what? I'm adaptable. 
And she was so like proud of herself, but actually took like, this is someone who wouldn't have worked online whenever I've offered it in the past, when we were separated for whatever reason, for longer than usual amount of time. No, no, no. But in this time, she has taken the um, advantage of seeing each other on Zoom. And, uh, mm -hmm. and just that, uh, can you see myself? Like I'm, my spine is getting taller and I could see that in her, that sense of I'm adaptable. Mm -hmm. And then to take that into, this is a new sense of self. You know, someone else might say, oh, I'm learning about strength. I thought strength was my defenses and not needing, but actually feeling this emotion that that's a different kind of strength that I can hold myself and my family differently. So then that starts to open into an expanded sense of possibility of being with family and being with community, you know, recognizing like, oh my gosh, so much is going on. What can I do? Mm -hmm. I want to do more, right? And so the sense of how can I participate in a meaningful way with my community? So that sense of being part of and that expansiveness, I think of this is a part of, of course, state of the truth that we are all in something so big together. And I want to do my part. And I want to feel my part. Mm -hmm. And that may even tie into narrative, like, oh, when I was a kid and this happened, I was so isolated. I'm doing this differently. Our family is staying together differently than then. So there can also be new narratives and new possibilities of dealing with crisis that are coming out of this. And, um, and again, compassion for self, compassion for others. Just gonna mm -hmm. check here. So I think I wanna stop here and just, um, just be so grateful that we have this model with these states to kind of recognize how to be where we are, how to use ourselves, mm -hmm. continuing to use ourselves to undo aloneness and be together during this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see we have a raised hand. Yeah, that's David, and uh, thank you, David, for holding on. Can we bring David on to ask questions? Yes, we or can. Make a comment. If David, uh, he should be coming on any second. <laughs> okay. There he is. Hi. Hi, Karen. Hi. Ben. Thank you guys so much. Um, I just noticed that when you were talking about self-disclosure, <clears throat> a piece came up for me where um, my clients, because I'm older and they're concerned for me and um, ask, well, how are you? Pretty much right away. Mm -hmm. And that I vibrated a little between fine, fine, and let's get to work and letting them know, well, I moved out of my house. My wife is a nurse. We thought that was best. Um, it's a little lonely, but I'm doing okay. Mm. And, um, and then into, you know, meta processing that how is it for you to ask? I'm so touched by, in other words, receiving their care has become this huge piece for me yes. when they ask. And, and it, when we were on the topic, it just felt so important as a way of connection to really receive their love. Mm -hmm. And yes. to say it explicitly, I'm really moved. How is it to see me moved, et cetera. Yes. And, 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 but I've also wondered, is it too much? You know, because we could do that for 10 minutes. Yeah, I, it's such, a, such an important piece, David. Thank you for bringing that in. And um, you're making me think of the moments that I've had with my clients and you know, in ADP, we say we try something and we see what happens. So in terms of the too much, the information comes uh, in the experience and in the moment to moment tracking and in the meta processing and being inquisitive about it. Um, and one thing that I'm really aware of that you're, that you're calling attention to is how um, transformational, the uh, receiving of people's care and concern and love, as you said, for us can be. Um, it can be transformational for us, 
right? Meaning it might feed a part of us that needs care and love and those things. And also I've I had an experience with a client where he, uh, towards the end of the session asked, how are you? And I gave him a very real authentic answer. And we met a process and he said, it's important to me because I care about you. Mm -hmm. right? And I said, and what's that like to let me know that explicitly? Because that was a new thing that was emerging. And we had done some work about our relational um, experience together and how hard it was to take me in and my care. And so to be able, for him to be able to say that and recognize that and for me to take that in um, led us into some healing experiences. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so yes, it can, that authenticity, self-disclosure, and meta-processing can be so important and open new doors during this time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, thank David. You. you know, this reminds me, uh, Ben, of we're at just a couple few minutes before it's time for ending. Yeah. I love this letting ourselves take in our patients, our clients' care, meta-processing what that means, and just just seeing the spiral of transformation, just where that can grow to. So I'm so appreciative of your question. Like, what's that like to share that with me? Mm -hmm. And it reminds me like, and for all of you here, how are you now? You know, I, I'm hoping mm -hmm. this is some self-care for your therapist selves and for your personal selves. And I guess I would just like for each of you to just let yourselves meta process for a moment with yourselves. Like, how are you now? And What's this been like for you to go on this mm. journey with us today through the states and through our model and being with each other? And uh, and I can say, Ben, for me with you, <laughs> I've so enjoyed our process of processing what we want to talk about and to share and um, the undoing my aloneness sitting in my sessions, like having this sense of an awakened freshness of like, oh, this is what Ben and I were talking about. Or, mm -hmm. oh, when he says like, how is it for you to see me? I know I'm heightened in my tracking through our talking. Okay. So I've just so appreciated having this time with you. And, uh just it's been sweet and meaningful thank you Karen yeah I feel very similarly and um, really hopeful that, are hoping that, uh, that people that have joined us also have a, a sense of um, sharing together and community and um, being in this together at this time it's been really helpful to do this with you Karen Mm -hmm. um, now and also outside of the broadcast and, um, and I hope that it's helpful for other people and really appreciate it. it's kind of jumping in together and um, not having much of planning process in terms of, you know, weeks of mapping out what we're going to talk about, what we're going to do, but just jumping in and jumping in with everyone. So, um, Appreciate you, Karen, and I appreciate everyone that's joined us and for the questions um, that have been popping up, um, and David for joining us, and Monica, of course, for being with us and hosting us. Um, it's really nice to come together during this time. Yeah, thank you, Monica and Lynn and everyone at the Institute has been behind the scenes allowing us to have a, being able to reach more people by serving having this through the Institute. And also Monica is going to be putting these two weeks together. And I believe there will be CEs available. And um, that's right. So this is just an offering that will be available for people to make use of or to share with friends who weren't able to be here at this time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, that will be posted on the listserv and on the website. And an email will go out explaining how you can get your CEs. and. Um, yeah, it's it's all good. Thanks so much, you guys. We're we're at our time, and thank you everyone for um, your questions and 
take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Be Bye. well, take care, health and connection and support, whatever you need. And take yeah. care of yourselves along the way. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. Bye, Karen. Bye, Ben. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.